and welcome to uh, another video demo. Now, as you know, for the month of December, you all voted and you selected, well, the three top choices are the demos for this month. So, number one, I've done the paint along and then I did a step-by-step -step of number two last week and this week I'm going to do a video demo of uh, choice number three. Now, it's, it's uh, a nocturne and it's also winter. But it's not like our paint along where we have that clear, deep blue sky. In this case, it's a nocturne, but it was snowing. So it's very muted and like the sky and there's so many lights. It was, it's a park scene that the sky is not blue and the snow is not white. So it's really going to be an interesting thing. So I'm going to paint <clears throat> today using black paper. Can, can you see this? Okay. I'm going to use a piece of UART Dark. I believe it's the 600 gray. Let me double check. 600. Um, I thought by painting on black paper or dark paper, it would kind of give me a head start to get this really uh, dark moodiness that's in our reference photo. Uh, and then I thought, well, why not use the Blue Earth uh, pastels, the Nomad set, because they're very muted. And I thought, when I look at this set, I say, oh, I see all those colors in this particular photo. So I'm going to use the Nomad set, but I did add a few extra pastels. I will show you a picture of this. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give a still shot that will be in the body of the post, so you'll be able to see them up close, so don't worry about it. But then, what I decided to do was test them. So I took a piece of black paper. This is not sanded paper, so we didn't have very many layers, just to test out the colors. And so I'm going to use these pastels and then a few of the Blue Earth pastels. I'm not going to do any underpainting because the paper is already just a, a, a dark um, tone, so I don't really have to do an underpainting per se. Um, so I'm going to just dive right in. And I'll walk you through it as I go. Now, you're, you might say, but Karen, your study is a square. Your reference photo is a uh, rectangle. What are you going to do? I'm going to just go with the rectangle so I can spread things out a little bit more. This was just to test my colors. First thing I'm going to do is set the horizon line. But I have to ask myself, what is this painting about? Is it about the sky? Or is it about what's happening on the ground? And it's really a, about what's happening on the ground. The snow kind of coating the, um, this was a um, prairie garden. So the snow is kind of in between the dried flowers. And I love these little indications of the lights in the distance. Um, so I'm going to have a higher horizon line. Let me draw with a lighter um, color so that you guys can see. There's the horizon line, and then we have our main tr big tree. I'm going to put him slightly off center and pull it down a little bit. Got a tree off to the side, and then another two smaller trees on the left hand side. And then there's some distant stuff back there. And then we've got to kind of get our way towards this main tree. So we've got some snow bands right in here down in the foreground area and we'll do it like that. So there's my initial drawing. So the first thing I normally do when I paint is to block in the darks. Well, it's tricky to block in the darks when the paper is already dark, uh, but um, you still have to do it. So I'm going to take the blue earth, this is a dark blue, and I'm going to block in the shape of this big tree, but I'm using a very light touch because it's a bare tree. So how are we going to make it bare? Uh, we are going to do some negative painting to make it bare. Both of all of these trees. So I want to use a very light touch with my dark to get them blocked in. Where else is dark? There's actually a lot of dark stuff in the foreground because it's not all snow. So I'm going to just block in a few of those dark bits in the foreground. Now normally I do more than one layer of dark, so let's take a dark brown and just go over these areas. No. And now I'm going to go in and with 
the Terry Ludwig eggplant. I'm going to use the tip of it. See how much darker that is than the dark paper? Isn't it amazing? You think the paper is, is dark and uh, black, but when you put something even darker on it, you can really see that it isn't as dark as you think, the paper anyways. So I'm going to put in some of the tree trunks and ground the tree a little bit with that dark. Connect the dark shapes and do the same thing over here. All this dark stuff that I've put in here is going to play an important role as the painting progresses. All right. Now I've blocked in all the darks. So the next thing that I want to do is block in the light. So what is the lightest part of this painting? It's really the sky and, and the, some of the snow. Yes, the, the street lights or the light posts in, a, in the park, those are really the brightest lights, but we're going to put those in not right at this point. So what colors can I use to paint this sky? It's it's really interesting. It's kind of a gray um, with some pink and some yellow in it. So I'm going to just start off with a gray, darker than I really want the sky to be. There's a little bit of blue to, to it. I'm going to just be mixing up several colors. Let's see. There is a little bit of violet, purple to it. When I get to the tree, I'm going to just kind of pull my my um, pastel marks down into the tree. We're going to break it up in, in just a minute. What else do I see up there? Uh, a little bit of a peachy pink color. It's not quite bright, that bright. We'll have to dull this down a little bit. A little bit over here too. And then a, a peach. Here a little bit. This is too um, too bright, so we're going to tone it down a little bit. So let's take that gray and kind of knit them all together and tone down the intensity of that sky. Let's see what else. Add a little bit more of the pale violet to it. All right, now what we're going to do is start to carve into the tree. So we're going to take the edge of this purple pastel and, you know, you can look at the reference photo to help guide you or you can just make it into your own tree and just break up that dark area. This is step one. Do it to this side too. It's a multi-step process. You don't get it right the first time. So it kind of looks like a, it has crazy hair right now. So what I have to do is go back with the dark and soften it a little bit. Go over it with the dark again. And then I'm going to come in with a hard pastel and paint some more of those branches. So basically what's happening is the dark that I put down acts as kind of a haze. So it, you get the illusion. I made that tree way too big. Let's, let's uh, give that guy a haircut. Not only did I make him too big, I made it the same shape and size as its next door neighbor. And we always want to have a variety in our, our shapes and our sizes. So be sure to make that happen. So I was talking about creating these branches. It's just an illusion. If I were to really try to paint every single uh, branch and twig, I'd go crazy. So I want to just kind of make it feel like there's lots of bare branches and twigs. And I do that by the negative painting, going back and forth with painting sky holes, and coming back over it. You can even come in with a really super light touch. And I'm going to leave those alone for now. 
Then I'm going to start what's back here. There's something that's in the distance. They're kind of like um, distant, um, what should we make those? Distant trees. Let's make them. I need to make them a little bit lighter and duller. So let's add some of the gray to it. And that just shows that there's stuff growing in the distance. <clears throat> and then we're going to work on the snow. Before I paint in the snow, I want to put in some of the um, the dried grasses that are, are there. And then we'll come in and put the snow bands in. So let's start with some of those darks. Just reinforce some of those dark areas. And then come in with some of the snow color. Now the snow, we think, oh, the snow is white, but it's not. It's in the shadow, but it's getting, this probably here is, is probably uh, being lit by another one of those light posts. So it kind of takes on that peachy quality. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of the peach in this area and just break it up. Break up the dark with the pieces of snow. It also feels like it's a little bit pink in this area. And then when it goes over onto this side, it is actually going more into the shadow. So I'm going to, let's make it blue. It's interesting because I'm using um, the Blue Earth Pastels for the most part, which are super soft and the 600 grade paper which is very very smooth and the combination is quite interesting um, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of tooth it feels like my pastels are sliding around so it's kind of an interesting feeling now there's snow in the distance but it's not all in, in this, um, the light so I'm going to use some blue just to break, and it kind of is being broken up in here. But then some of it is catching the light, so I'm going to put a pale yellow on that top edge where it's catching the light. And a pale peach. Is it getting light over here? Just a little bit. So why don't we establish the light? Now well, let's finish some of the glasses first and then we'll come in and we'll spray it so I can get a little more texture but before we do that I want to establish those light posts so <clears throat> if you were able to watch the paint along you saw how I created the glowing lantern lights by starting with something darker instead of going right to the lightest color so let's put in an orange where I want those lights and then a little bit brighter orange right in the middle or lighter it's really a little bit lighter and then we're going to go to a yellow ochre which is kind of a duller yellow and i'm pressing very hard and then we're going to go to a cooler lemony yellow you see how they're starting to look lighter, brighter, like they're lit? That's because we're surrounding it with a darker value. If I were to just use the lightest color, they would not really look lit. Now I'm going to take the lightest yellow I have, which is almost white. That's the last color I'll put on these, like so. So you see how they look like they're lit? That's because I used the darker colors first. But then there's some other smaller ones in the distance. So I'm going to just go ahead and make a few smaller uh, yellow, pale yellow marks. There's also some, and this is really interesting, there's some bright kind of green. So I'm going to use this very, very pale uh, green, which makes a really interesting color of light. You could also use a blue. Sometimes you see lights in the distance that are blue. 
And you might even have a red light, but I don't have red in my pack right here. So that's how we get the lights to glow. Now let's work on the snow a little bit more in the foreground. I'm going to give it a spray of, of workable fixative. I'm also going to spray my big tree. Ooh, I gave it a little bit too much. We got to let that dry for just a minute. And by the way, I'm using um, the Blair Very Low Odor Spray Fixable Workable Fixative. Um, I've been experimenting with other fixatives. Um, but so far I like that the best to get this effects that I want to get. But I sprayed a little bit too much right in the tree area, so I'm going to have to wait for that to dry. While I'm waiting, I sprayed too much there too. So while I'm waiting, what I can do is brighten up the sky a little bit. So I have a harder pastel, and I'm going to just go over... the pastel that I have down there just to brighten it up a little bit because um, this sky had quite a lot of atmosphere due to the snow in the air um, so it really had a, a really interesting glow and you take that hard pastel and just drag it over the tree just kind of putting the tree, giving it a little bit more atmosphere. And I'll do the same for these, these guys. <clears throat> All right, now this is getting dry, so I can come in and work on some of these grasses. And in the foreground, some of the grasses are catching the light, so they're a little bit lighter. And then work them around the snow, and it kind of, they kind of come up like this. There's some reddish grasses. I think I can have a little bit more snow down in here, too. Let's use this to just kind of... We want a pathway to the back of the painting, so I'm going to just kind of give us some snow, leading us back to the distance. And then we can come in, put a little more grasses. And in the very back, those grasses that are at the edge of the shadowed snow are much darker. So I'm going to go in with that darker brown. Put some of it in here as well. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use some, uh, get some more texture. And I'm going to actually put in, I like this about this photo, there is, in this photo, there's some dried um, flowers. So I'm making some marks with a dark pastel, and I'm going to come in and draw some linear lines so that we can put in some of these, um, in the foreground, some of these grasses. And then hopefully the idea is that that will push the trees back into the distance a little bit more because there's more stuff in the foreground. There's some other grasses that are catching the light, so I'm using a lighter value new pastel to paint in some of these grasses. And then one thing that I'm noticing about the tree, now that it's dry, is it needs a little bit more feeling of the air coming through it. So I'm going to very, very lightly take that pale gray and just kind of drag it through. And that gives that illusion of more of a lacy feeling to the tree than it, than it was having. And then put back some of the branches. So I think if my eye is really going to this light area, I'm going to put another bit of light down in here and in here, and then another one down in here. So that the idea is you follow this pathway of light into the distance. And then you are greeted back here by all this interesting snowy uh, things going on back here and the light on the snow in the distance. And I really like that yellow glow. I'm going to take the pale yellow 
and very, very lightly just come in and add a little bit of yellow kind of glow in the back just to light it up a little bit more. And I think the last thing I'm going to do is take my peachy pink new pastel and draw some linear marks, kind of knitting the colors in the sky together a little bit more and pulling your eye down into the painting a little bit more. So sometimes I like to play around with linear marks to create kind of interest where there might not be an interest. But the sky is just boring. So I think I'm going to stop at this point. This is the idea that it's when we're working in a nocturne, the colors that we see are going to be duller. So I'm using some of the browns and violets and grays that I wouldn't normally use. But because our eye sees a little bit of color, but not bright color, I'm using the duller colors. Um, and then making those lights glow are a lot of fun. So a lot of fun to practice with those. So I hope you've enjoyed this demo, uh, another nocturne in the winter. And I uh, hope you have fun. I will put post the reference photo in the comments, in the body of the post there, so that you can go ahead and paint along. And if you've got any questions, please ask and let's paint.